Yo everybody, I hope everyone's good, I hope everyone's blessed. I know it's been a while, okay, don't shout at me, I know it's been a while since this channel's been active, it's been like a year and a half, but we are back, you know, we've had some issues with editing and all that stuff, we are back, I promise you we are back, better than ever, we're back. Cool, so I'm going to be doing loads of music tutorials, um, videos of live recordings and performances that I'm working on at the moment or I've done already. Um, and literally anything you guys want me to do musically if anyone's got any like requests in terms of want to learn something different I'm happy to do a video on it. Do you know what I mean? But just for today just for now. I'm gonna keep it very simple and I've literally just spent the last few minutes just writing this basic melody and we're just gonna add a basic instrumental to it and a beat and just you know see what happens So this is the melody <laughs> Cool. Um, so the first thing you probably notice is the mark is at the top here. So I've literally just, when I was doing the melody, I just thought, let me just give it a really basic, crappy arrangement. So we've got intro, verse, chorus, and each one is, what is that, eight, six, 16 bars. Each section is 16 bars. I've literally not even done a whole full track on this. It's just literally, I mean, you can literally see. It was like a minute and 13 in. So I'm just going to go through this as quickly as possible and just keep this quite simple and not hopefully not get carried away and get too technical. Okay, I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna add a kick drum. Got a very basic sample kit that I use quite a lot. Which is not working. Okay, hold on. Okay, I've got the keyboard working now. Let's add in some basic kicks and... I think I'll do kicks and snare. I'm gonna do kick and a rim shot at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, okay, very simple, very simple, not too complicated. Right, what I want to do, I know these kit two kits pretty well, what I want to do is... So I want the rim shots to be on that second kit, and then I want the kicks from this first kit here. So now, we've got this. Okay, but um... Yeah, if you think about this arrangement wise, that's, that's going to be in the verse, it's not going to be in the intro. And really not going to bring in the beat until the verse, so yeah, let's just do that. Okay, I'm going to come back to kit number one. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I do not like that. What else have we got? A few moments later. Right, let's go. nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it is quite a, it is quite a slow beat, isn't it? Because the tempo is just really just shit. But it still works, yeah. Okay, that, that response time was mad. That the Mac was just not having it. But yeah, I okay, guess let's, let's add in that extra thing as well. Yeah, yeah, just to kind of spice it up just a little bit, you know, add your salt and pepper on it. Nice. Yeah, let's not put too much season on it. Okay. That was, that was a shit joke. But yeah. You know. Cool. So, I mean, the idea is to try and keep it as simple as possible. Because if you think about this in terms of trying to put an artist on it, you don't want there to be so many layers that it's like the artist doesn't know where to fit in if they're rapping or singing or do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, for those of you who don't know me, well, for those of you who do know me, I do mainly write film music. So for me, making beats, it's not. It's not really something I focus on. I like to keep things quite simple. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, but yeah, this is just, like I said, a very basic beat, a very basic run through of what's going on. So, yes, okay. So we've got our beat, we've got our melody. What do we need next? We need a bass line, we need something to just hold it, just to kind of sustain the whole piece together. So, what am I going to do? An 808, obviously. Obviously, I'm just going to put an 808. No, no, that's not what I'm going to do. That's what everyone does. That's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is, instead of using 808, I'm going to use double basses. Right, we need to figure out this bass line. And how are we going to do that? Well, it's actually quite simple. For the bass line, we can't just literally just put in any notes we feel like it. Okay, that did kind of work. I mean, yeah, cool. What we need to figure out is, you know, what notes are going to work, what notes aren't going to work. Okay, what I know from listening to the melody and from writing the melody is that I know which key I'm working in. So I know that I'm working in the key of A minor. So this is what the melody sounds like. So on, so on, right? So I know that in the key of A minor, these are the notes that do work in the key. That, that's the scale of A minor. But what I do know is that if I use notes that aren't in the key of A minor, so if I use one of the keys, notes from the major key, it just, it sounds kind of off. Do you see what I mean when you've got notes like that? That works. The other notes that don't work, they don't work because you know it's not in the same key. So I know I'm working in A minor, so I've just got to use those notes to create a bass line. So there's loads of different, you know, ways I could do the bass line. I'm going to come back to the double basses now. So because I'm working in A minor, I know I can start on an A, on a C, on an E, even an F. Do you know what I mean? Because all of those notes are in the key. So I'm just going to try one variation and see how this works. Okay, yeah, so a very shit, a very crappy bass line, yeah, the notes do work, but you know, it's it's not, it's not ideal, do you know what I mean, because all the notes are so long, it's just the same repetitive length of notes and stuff all over and over again, so, you know, I'm think, now thinking to myself, what can I do to make it sound a bit different, make, make the rhythm slightly different, or just make the notes sound a bit more interesting instead of it just being a really flat bass line, it's a very simple answer, I'm going to change what's known as the articulation, so the way in which the notes are played. So instead of using legato notes, which are literally really smooth kind of joint notes, those are quite smooth. What I'm gonna do is change the articulation and use pizzicato. And yeah, so pizzicato is basically when the double place bass is sitting down and instead of using their bow and playing the notes, they're literally plucking the notes, they're literally using their fingers and plucking the notes. So you get this kind of natural kind of sort of detached sound. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, something else. just a bit more. Just yeah, it just sounds nice, doesn't it? Cool. Well, I think I know what we're gonna do for our baseline now. There we go, and then that will just repeat over and over. So we've got our bass line. Um, what I want to do is not overcomplicate the whole piece. So I think for the verses, I think that's how I'm literally just going to leave it in terms of what happens there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get with this last verse here. So as you can see, when I've clicked on the actual arrangement marker itself, if I click on verse and delete it, it deletes everything. So if I hold down verse here, left click it, you see it says move arrangement. Now if I hold alt, and then it says copy arrangement. And then I can literally drag that where I want it, which is there. And it was just dragged the whole thing. So instead of me having to select everything in that section, I can just select the marker and then just literally just drag everything across. So then I just, you know, short little things like that do make your life easier. What I want to do is make things slightly different for the chorus, you know, maybe bring something in new because we want the different sections to have a bit of variety so they sound kind of different. We, want, we don't want everything to sound completely flat and completely the same. So 
I'm going to come back to my to the BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin here once again. I will go through this plugin in another video because this plugin is literally a completely different story. Um, yeah, that's a story for another day. But cool, I'm going to get some horns. Cool, so I'm going to use the horns to create like a kind of secondary kind of accompanying melody for the chorus just to give the sections a bit of um, variety. Right, so we're going to use the legato patch for these horns. Um, and I'm literally just going to run it through from halfway through the verse and then just create like a little melody for the chorus. change that last note because that note was a bit off but you know we get the idea just bringing in something different right i'm gonna repeat that once again for the for the chorus how am i going to do that i hear you ask once again i'm literally just going to click on this hold alt and then just drag it across there we go copied right one last thing i'm going to add in before we just leave this be is an orchestral percussion technique i use quite a lot so you know, between the verse and the chorus and the intro, you want something to kind of build up into it. You don't want it, you don't always just want a, the drop on the first beat for the beat. So for that, what I'm going to use is what's known as suspended cymbal. So what this basically is, is that you've got a suspended cymbal and you've got something like, I think it's like mallet sticks or something. It's not normal drumsticks and you're basically rolling and the faster you roll them, it kind of helps to build the sound and then the sound rises to a certain level and then it just kind of like fades and dies out, which basically sounds like this. So as you can hear, how the sound builds, rises and drops. So when writing film music as well, not even just in film music, in uh, mainstream music as well, I do use that quite a lot, just to kind of, it's a really simple technique just to kind of build and, um, you know, lead into something. So I'm going to use that to lead from the intro into the verse and probably again from the verse into the chorus. See what I mean? It just kind of helps to lift the piece up a bit as well. And then we're going to do it once again from the verse into the chorus. last time maybe one last time just for the sake of ending off the piece Yeah, so imagine this was an actual properly arranged piece where it's going to be like double the length um, and everything's twice as long and it's not like, what, a minute and a half and it's like, what, two, three minutes long. Um, that, you know, that's ideally what it would have sounded like. But yeah, just for the sake of this, I'm keeping it very short. Basic verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and that's just it. So yeah, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is literally just me, what, in under 20 minutes just trying to write something quite basic to a melody, just showing you what I can do in a short space of time. But yeah, look out for the other videos as well. There's going to be a three-part series on spoken word writing music from literally just some words that I've been given. There's um, things like trap loop tutorials as well, tutorials on music from different genres. But yeah, I'm going to leave this here for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Feel free to leave any comments. If you guys got any suggestions on what you want me to do for a video as well, always, you know, let me know and message that to me. I'm always happy to respond to questions and stuff. Cool. Well, have a good day, everyone, and peace out.